Looking back over the past year, what is the one thing that you are most proud of? And what is the one thing you could change if you had the opportunity to do it all over again? The thing that's worked really well is bringing together our caucus and our party in a way that's stronger than I think it has been for years. People are feeling a real sense of cohesion, real sense of purpose, and we've come together as a great team. In terms of something to perhaps do better the next time, it's getting off the ground sooner, I suppose. I was new in the job on February 3rd, and it takes a while to find your feet, but it went really well overall. You've been in this job now for almost a year. Um, talk about the unique situation you're in, especially being the opposition to this NDP and Green Party alliance. What are the biggest challenges that come with that? Yeah, it's been very frustrating for us trying to deal with the Greens because they maintain that they're an independent organization with their own ways of thinking. They talk a lot about independent policy and evidence-based policy, and then they just vote slavishly with the NDP. The suspension scandal dominated the last two weeks of the fall sitting, and yet the session wrapped up with no emergency debate in the House and no emergency meeting held at, as you had requested. So when we hear people like John Horgan and Mike Farnworth come forward saying they can't comment because there is an ongoing investigation, how do you argue that? Well, that's true in terms of the actual allegations that might arise against the two individuals who are removed from their positions. But the Auditor General has an overriding purpose to make sure that the financial credibility of British Columbia is intact and that taxpayers are being told the truth about their finances. That's an overriding obligation. And there are legal mechanisms whereby the Auditor General could be completely informed about what's going on. She's been kept in the dark. There are a lot of questions about the legislature right now and the high-handed behavior of the speaker has not helped. He's been quite erratic and providing varying answers that differ day by day. He's retained two special advisors who give contradictory answers to him. The whole thing has this air of the Keystone Cops about it. And that's not good for the people of British Columbia who are supposed to have faith in this institution. So how has it been living in, I don't want to say the shadow of, but you came on the heels of Christy Clark. Well, I'm often told I'm not Christy Clark. Sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it's not so good. But I'm a very different person, obviously a very different style. Christy was very successful in her own right, and I thank her for the work she did, and she gave up most of her adult life for British Columbia. And so I've now got this job, and we'll put my own stamp on it, and we'll have, uh, hopefully, a lot of fun making sure that British Columbians have a real choice in the next election. BC Liberal leader Andrew Wilkinson speaking with the CBC's Tanya Fletcher. We should mention that interview was recorded in early December before the results of the electoral reform referendum were released.